It's time for another episode of your favorite game show, Open, Close, or Compact, where we take a look at a small selection of sets and figure out, are they open, closed, or compact? All right, cut the stupid music. Let's begin with the integers. And I'll leave links in the description to relevant lessons if you need a refresher on what open, closed, or compact sets are. Beginning with the integers, are the integers an open set? The answer is no, because any neighborhood of any integer is going to contain non-integers. Thus, it is not an open set. What makes a set open is that all of its elements have some neighborhood around them entirely contained in the set. The integers certainly don't fit that criteria. All right, are the integers closed? Well, one definition of a closed set is that its complement is open. So let's think about the complement of the integers. The complement of the integers would just be the union of all of the open intervals that go between the integers, like this, on and on and on, into the negative direction as well. And this set is certainly open, because the union of open sets is open. So what we see is that the complement of the integers is an open set, that means by definition, the integers are closed. So yes, the integers, that is a closed set. Is it a compact set? Well, we've previously proven that a set is compact if and only if it's closed and bounded. Link in the description to that proof. Uh, the integers are not bounded. So although they're closed, they're not bounded, and so it cannot be a compact set. The integers go on infinitely in positive and negative directions. So not open, it is closed, but it's not compact. Let's move on to number two. By the way, this problem set is from the excellent textbook Real Analysis by Jay Cummings. Link to the textbook in the description if you want to buy it. Really recommend it. So here, our second set is the union of the reciprocals of natural numbers with the set containing zero. Is this set open? Again, similar to the integers, it's not open. You may notice that it only contains rational numbers, but any neighborhood around a rational number will contain irrationals. And so any neighborhood of these numbers will contain some irrationals, which are not in the set. And so it certainly cannot be open. Is the set closed? Well, we've previously proven, link in the description, that a set is closed if and only if it contains all of its limit points. The only limit point of this set is zero. You can see here on the left, we're getting closer and closer to zero with the reciprocals of the naturals. And the set does contain that limit point because the set containing zero is, is part of this set. So it does contain all of its limit points, and so it is a closed set. It is also bounded. It's bounded above by one and bounded below by zero. It's closed, it's bounded, that means it's a compact set. All right, now what about number three, the real numbers? Is it open? Well, any neighborhood around any real number contains only real numbers. So it's pretty trivial. The real numbers are indeed an open set. Every real number has a neighborhood around it entirely contained in the reals. In fact, any neighborhood around a real number is entirely contained in the reals. So it is an open set. Similarly, it is a closed set because all of the limit points of the real numbers are real numbers. The real numbers contain all of those limit points, so it's a closed set. However, it's not bounded, so it fails to be compact. But it is both open and closed. Moving on to number four, the union of this open interval with this closed interval. Is it an open set? It is not open because any neighborhood around this endpoint three is going to contain some numbers that are outside of the set, some numbers that are close to three, but less than three, and they're not in this set. So it's not open since there's this number in the set, three, that has no neighborhood around it entirely contained in the set. 
not open. It's also not closed because, for example, zero is a limit point of this set. In the open interval from zero to one, we can get arbitrarily close to zero. So certainly zero is a limit point, but we see the set doesn't contain zero. Since it doesn't contain all of its limit points, it's not a closed set. And since it's not closed, it certainly can't be compact because a compact set needs to be closed and bounded. Number five is the set of rational numbers. Is this an open set? No, because any neighborhood around a rational number is going to contain some irrationals. So it is not open since those neighborhoods are not contained in the set. Is it closed? No. We could construct fractions that get arbitrarily close to pi, for example. So pi is a limit point of the rationals, but pi isn't rational. It's not in the set. So the set doesn't contain all of its limit points, and thus it's not closed. Since it's not closed, it can't be compact. Either. Finally, number six, a singleton set containing only seven. It is not open because any neighborhood around seven goes outside of this set since the set only contains seven. It is closed because its only limit point trivially is seven and seven is in the set. So it contains all of its limit points. Alternatively, its complement is the union of two open intervals, which is an open set. So it's definitely closed. Uh, and thus, it's compact because it's clearly bounded above and below by seven. It's closed, it's bounded, it's compact. Let's just quickly come back to the real numbers for a second. Just another way we could show that this set isn't compact. The real numbers is the same as the union of all of these open intervals from negative n to positive n, where n goes from zero to infinity, right? The real numbers is the same as the union of all of these open intervals. Thus, this union is an open cover of the real numbers. And one definition of a compact set is that every open cover of the set contains a finite subcover, but there's no finite subcover of this open cover of the real numbers. Whatever finite subcover you take from this open cover, it's only going to go up to the biggest n that's in your finite subcover, and all the bigger numbers would not be included. So since we have an open cover of the real numbers here with no finite subcover, that shows that it's not a compact set. And that's all the time we have. So how'd you do? Let me know in the comments, and I'll see you next time on Open, Closed, or Compact.